Hi guys, so today we're looking at a subsection of macroeconomics and more specifically the interest rate transmission mechanism and this comes off monetary policy. So without further ado, let's get into this. So the interest rate transmission mechanism is how a change in the money supply affects aggregate demand via a change in interest rates. So let's just break down this definition. So how a change in money supply and this is changing the money supply and money demand diagram affects aggregate demand this is on our ASAD diagram via a change in interest rates now to link interest rates what we will use is a invest investment diagram so just write this down here so money money diagram I'm sure you're all aware of these diagrams. ASAD diagram, which is looking at the general economy and interest rate, what we're going to be using is an investment graph or diagram. So I've left this little bit of space here to just show the interest rate transmission mechanism in stages. So first of all, we'll look at stage one. So stage one is we're going to assume that this money supply I'll put it in a little box is going to increase. So this money supply is increasing. So that's the first stage. Now in stage two, it's more of a multi a multi process. So essentially what's going to happen from a money supply increase. So I'll draw some red connecting lines. An increase in money supply is going to affect interest rates. Now the question is, how is it gonna affect interest rates and what is gonna to happen to the interest rate? Is it gonna go up or is it gonna go down? So this, is essentially the money to interest rate link. And I'll show you what happened in a diagram. So we'll call this the money diagram. So this would be rate of interest. Sorry about my handwriting. And this would be the quantity of money. So obviously our liquidity preference or our demand for money is downward sloping because the lower the interest rate, the more likely people are going to go borrow money. And this has been quite prevalent in the news recently with the economy. As you can see, um, the since we've had a really low interest rate, house, pro house mortgages are booming. And we'll do a money supply and we'll do an endogenous money supply curve. No reason for it. And there is our equilibrium. Now, we're saying that money supply increases. If there's going to be an increase in money supply, this is going to mean the money supply curve is going to shift rightwards. Why is it going to shift rightwards? Well, because we're increasing the quantity of money. It'll shift like this. And from that simple diagram, you can see the quantity has increased and the interest rate has decreased. Therefore, here we can say interest rate has decreased. Now, now we've had the interest rate decrease, still part of stage two, what is going to happen to investment and savings? Now, Keynes and the Muntress have very different views on this, but for this example, we're just going to use the neutral view. We're going rather apolitical, you may say. So we'll use this second diagram to show what will happen to investment and savings. So we'll have this as the rate of interest again. I'll just have rate of interest, I, I for interest. And then we'll have 
the x-axis as investment. Now, investment is going to increase when interest rates are at its lowest. So let's put that into the graph. Therefore, it's going to be downward sloping, a little bit like this. I, And from our graph, what we can see is that at the original interest rate, before we altered money supply, we were at this point of interest, obviously, but at this IE, for equilibrium, level of investment. However, because the interest rates have decreased and because it's downward sloping, what you can see is a relative increase in investment. Therefore, investment is going to increase. However, we know from the circular flow of income that savings equals investment. Therefore, savings will decrease because if there's more investment, there's going to have to be less savings. The savings will decrease. And this is going to move us on to stage three now. This is looking very messy and I do apologise, but stage three. So what is this going to do to our aggregate demand? Is it going to increase or is it going to decrease? So we can look at this by doing a WJ, looking at the WJ model, the withdrawals and injections. So, based off this model, let's add in our injections line. This is exogenous, not affected by anything outside of the insight within the model, sorry, J. And we'll have our upward slope and withdrawals because as GDP increases, we have more going out in the form of taxes, imports. So there is that. And since investment is an injection, what I can do is I'll just draw AD is SIG XM, domestic consumption, investment, government expenditure, plus X minus M. Investment is an injection. Therefore, what's going to happen is an increase in investment is going to increase the J line upwards like this. And as you can see from that simple shift upwards, we have got an increase in GDP. Therefore, what we can say based off this that we will have an increase in GDP and <clears throat> an increase in prices. Because obviously if you're going to have an increase in GDP, there's going to be more money flowing around in the economy. Therefore, prices are also going to increase. And that can be seen using the ASAD model. And that essentially is the interest rate transmission mechanism. Now there is something else we can add. We can add that there is going to be a multiplier effect. As you can see here, the distance between J1 and J2 is about that. However, this is a larger distance because of the multiplier effect. And you can see that in my, pre in my other videos when we go over the circular flow of income. So I hope you understand that and thanks for watching.